Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Sean Lee, and I'm going to be the host this morning. Welcome to the second anniversary of Kim Il Dong Foundation Scholarship Award 2024 and 2025. Please rise for the national anthem. Let us give a moment of silence to honor those who have fallen to defend freedom and democracy. Moment of silence ended. Thank you, guys. Please sit down. Good job. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure for me to introduce our first speaker today. After the fall of Saigon in 1975, she arrived in America with only $30 in her pocket. And that is a story that she always tell me and the younger generation. To, to inspire us and motivate us to have a good future in America and don't take things for granted. She was here all by herself without a family. After years of hard work at IBM, she joined Pragmatics in 1987 and later became the company's vice chairman and chief financial officer. Talking about American dream, she proved to us that it is very attainable. But you have to work hard and have the right attitude. In 2008, she was selected as one of profiles in diversity journals, Women Worth Watching. Just last year, she was awarded Mason Medal 
at George Mason University's, it's the highest honorary award and Glenn Martin Medal from University of Maryland. She is married to Dr. Long Nguyen and resides in Virginia. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming president and founder of Kim Yoong Foundation, Ms. Kim Yoong. Xin chào các anh chị, các bạn và các cháu. Thật là một hình vinh hình lớn cho Kim Mỹ Dương được đón chào mọi người, đến chung vui với các em trong dịp các em nhận học bổng của Long Nguyễn và Kim Mỹ Dương lần thứ nhì ở Southern California. Kim Mỹ Dương Foundation là một tổ chức từ thiện nhằm mục đích giúp đỡ các lĩnh vực sức khỏe, giáo dục và nhân đạo. Chúng tôi mong được góp phần xây dựng một xã hội tốt đẹp cho con cháu chúng ta sau này. Sau đây tôi xin nói bằng tiếng Anh tại vì mình cũng có rất nhiều khách ngoài quốc và các em dễ cho các em theo dõi. Good morning. Dear honor guests and scholarship recipient, it is an honor for me to be here and have an opportunity to talk to all of you, especially scholarship recipient. As most of you already know, my family has supported higher education for many years. Our support began with Iowa I'm sorry, Iowa um, State University expanded to George Mason University, to the University of Maryland, and now many university in DMV and Southern California. The newest um, university is UDC and CSU Fullerton. Just a little bit more than 40 years, uh, 49 years ago, we came here with almost nothing. Since then, many of us have worked very hard to send our children to school, to college, to become the productive contributor to our new country. Now we have to pay back to this adopted country. We are the, the op adopted children appreciate the opportunity and we do not take them for granted. Today we are successful professional, thanks to America, thanks to your investment in us. I would like to take this opportunity to express our appreciation, our gratitude. As I told you in 2019, in DMV that I hope one day I can award hundreds of scholarships to many more college, university. My husband laughed at me and he said, you have a big dream. When I asked him how could we accommodate everyone on the special day like this, I am happy to inform you this year in DMV, we award 130 scholarships, 10 universities, and in Southern California, we award almost 40 scholarships and five universities. <laughs> Recipient, today you will have a chance to listen to your keynote speaker. Dr. Willie, Vice Chancellor of U UCI, and um, I'm sorry, um, you will have also have a chance to listen to the message of your dean, school representative, and I'm so grateful that they are taking time from their busy school scheduled to talk to us. Please use this 
opportunity to make good choice for your life. You are the only one can make the difference for your life, for yourself, and hard work the pay off. Please do not take anything for granted. I would like to this opportunity to thank our sponsor, our supporter. Your contribution has made a difference for this scholarship program. And as you can see, 100% of your contribution go directly to support our students. I hope that you will continue your support. We are depending on you. I would like to take this opportunity also to thank my team, 42 judges who are working so hard day and night, review so many applications, interview so many candidates to select the best candidate. Again, we would like to thank you for coming here to share with us the great moment for awarding our scholarship recipient. Now, I would like to introduce my eldest nephew, Hai Nguyen. Hai is the, our director of Kim Il Dung Foundation. Thank you. Good morning. It's, uh, my name is Hai Nguyen. Uh, I'm a director of KDF. It's an honor to be here for the second Long Nguyen and Kim Il Jung Scholarship Award Ceremony on the West Coast, specifically in the Southern California area. A couple of weeks ago, it was the seventh Long Nguyen and Kim Il Jung Scholarship Award Ceremony on the East Coast, specifically in the DMV, Washington DC, Maryland, Virginia area. First of all, I'd like to congratulate this year award recipients, and I'd like to thank our corporate sponsor and all the benefactors for, for providing the scholarship recipients with this wonderful opportunity to be able to pursue their dreams. I'd like to thank the selection committee working tirelessly with Kimi to select and award the scholarship. Um, I'd like to thank all the representatives from University of California of Los Angeles and Irvine, California State University of Fullerton and Long Beach, and California, and California Poly Pomona. I'd like to thank the presence of the representative of the local city, uh, local congresswoman. Your presence is the loudest congratulation of the scholarship recipient's achievement. May I recap, recap the, the history? Dr. Long Nguyen, alma mater is Iowa State University. So once he found his company, uh, Pragmatic Corporation, in 1987, so he started to donate to his alma mater. Dr. Long Nguyen is also the board director at the George Mason University. So Kimi and Dr. Long Nguyen raised the STEM awareness, science, technology, engineering, math, by donating $5 million to the School of Engineering at George Mason University. So, seven years ago, Kimi Yun started this foundation with her generosity to encourage higher education and to pay back to this country that foster refugee and immigrant. At that time, only 12 students from my alma mater, University of Maryland. Now it grew to 140 plus, students from various college and university around the DMP area. So their good philanthropy, uh, philanthropy for the good cause attract the attention of the local business like Wing Win from Teletron 
And secondly, lots of donations come from Californians, like me, like Dr. Vicky Yoon. So, so we started the West Coast sponsorship last year with uh, 22 scholarships, recipients, and now we are here today with close to 40 scholarship recipients. So that's the brief history of this uh, foundation. To the uh, scholarship recipients, our selection committee would like to congratulate all of you for your outstanding achievements and remarkable personal growth. We have no doubt that each and every one of you continue to excel in all of your future endeavor, continue to be socially responsible uh, student and upstanding citizen who will contribute greatly to our society. Recipients, always remember, having knowledge is having power. Giving kindness and lighting your life. Thank you for your attention. And once again, congratulations. Thank you, Mr. High Win. I think you guys did a great job uh, coming across, all the way across the country from Virginia uh, to the West Coast to organize an event like this. Um, please allow me to introduce to you our next speaker. He served as the Vice Chancellor, Student Affairs at UC Irvine since July 2019. In his position, he is charged with providing oversight and direction to the Division of Student Affairs, which is comprised of clusters addressing holistic development of UCI students. The division is dedicated to transforming the lives of more than 38,000 students and employs over 800 full-time and 1,200 student staff members. Prior to his role at UCI, he served as Vice President for the Student Affairs at uh, Indiana State University. He is passionate about teaching, learning, and mentorship and is active in several professional organizations related to higher education and student success. He has dedicated his professional career to the field of student affairs with experience in various capacities overseeing multicultural programs, resource centers, services, student unions, and housing and dining programs. He earned his undergraduate degree from Mercer University of Macon, Georgia, and his master's and PhD in College Student Affairs Administration from the University of Georgia. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for Dr. Willie Banks, Jr. Good morning, everyone. I'm gonna adjust this microphone a little bit taller than everyone, so how's everyone doing? All right, we need a little bit more energy for this morning, so we're going to do that again. How is everyone doing? Yeah. That is much better. Good morning, good morning. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, respected administrators, honored scholarship recipients, and beloved family members, it is with immense pride and gratitude that I stand before you today as we celebrate the remarkable achievements of the Kimi Duong Foundation Scholarship recipients. Today, we honor 38 first-generation college students from, from campuses across Southern California, a group of individuals who exemplify the very essence of resilience, determination, and excellence. Today, we gather not just to honor their academic success, but to recognize their journey, their contributions, and their potential to shape a brighter future for all of us. Let's give them a big round of applause. I would also like to extend my heartfelt congratulations to the scholarship recipients from UCLA, CSU Fullerton, CSU Long Beach, CSU Pomona, and our very own UC Irvine. You have demonstrated outstanding achievement, strong leadership, and an unwavering commitment to community service. You take pride in your Vietnamese heritage and culture, and you have overcome financial challenges with the support of the Kimi Duong Foundation. Your accomplishments are a testament to your hard work, perseverance, and the support of your families and communities. At UC Irvine, we are proud to be home to a diverse and vibrant student body. In the last academic year, 
42% of our undergraduate students, which equates to roughly 12,000 students, were first generation students. Additionally, 36% of, of our students are Pell Grant eligible, reflecting their financial need and their determination to pursue higher education despite economic challenges. These numbers are not just statistics. They represent the dreams, the hopes, the aspirations of countless families who see education as a pathway to a better future. Navigating the complexities of a university campus can be daunting, especially for first-generation students. It requires a high degree of self-reliance and the courage to seek out and utilize available resources. Our campuses are equipped with resource and identity centers that provide essential support, fostering a sense of belonging and community. For example, at UC Irvine, our own cross-cultural center will be celebrating its 50th anniversary this fall. And it is home to cultural clubs that create a first home away from home environment for students who have never lived away from their families and communities. Our basic needs center provides student access to fresh food, diapers, and emergency housing resources to those who could not otherwise be able to afford them. And our dream center serves those impacted by immigration policy through advancing systematic change, deconstructing oppressive policies and fostering community. These centers are havens where students can find guidance, mentorship, and a network of peers who understand their experiences. Involvement in campus life is crucial for a full university experience. Participation in clubs, student government, volunteering, research, and working on campus as a student staff member not only enriches the university journey, but also helps build lasting friendships and relationships with mentors. These experiences ensure that when our students graduate, they are well-rounded individuals prepared to tackle career goals with confidence and competence. For our students, communication with their families about their university experience is vital. It is important for our families to understand the value of their degree, the significance of their involvement on campus, and how these experiences broaden their perspective and prepare them to thrive in a diverse and global community. They not only need to succeed in the classroom, but they also need to spend their time to build leadership and interpersonal skills outside of the classroom so that when they graduate, they are both academically prepared and developmentally prepared with the skills to be necessary to be leaders in their profession. When students share their journey, they not only validate their families' sacrifices, but also inspire future generations to pursue higher education. The dedicated support from donors like the Camille Duong Foundation is instrumental in creating opportunities for our students. Through their generosity, we can provide a safe and welcoming environment where students are free to explore their identities, challenge their thinking, and bridge their academic work with community service. Higher education becomes a transformative experience, empowering students to give back to their communities and to contribute positively to society with the hopes to increase the number of scholarship recipients over the next several years, the Kimi Duong Foundation will grow their ability to help students decrease the financial barriers to education. Today, we recognize 11 undergraduate students from UC Irvine who are receiving scholarships from the Kimi Duong Foundation, along with scholarship recipients from CSU Fullerton, Cal Poly Pomona, CSU Long Beach, and UCLA. And we are honored to have administrators from these esteemed institutions present with us today. If you are present and I call your name, please stand in, in um, if you are able. Dr. Elizabeth Zavala Aceves, for Associate Vice President, CSU Fullerton. Ms. Christina Gonzalez, <laughs> VP and Dean of Student Affairs, Cal Poly Pomona. Dr. Trace Camacho, Associate Dean of Student Affairs, CSU Long Beach and Ms. Angela Campbell, Assistant Dean and Director of UCLA Center for Scholarships. Thank you for your support of the foundation. We are building a stronger Southern California support system for first-generation college students. As we celebrate the achievements of our scholarship recipients, let us acknowledge the collective effort that has brought them to this moment. Families, friends, mentors, and supporters, your unwavering belief and these students has been their starting point and continues to be their foundation. 
Your encouragement and love have propelled them forward, and today we share in their triumph. To our scholarship recipients, as you continue your academic journey, remember that you carry the hopes and dreams of your communities with you. You are not just students, you are trailblazers, leaders and future change makers. Embrace every opportunity, overcome every challenge, and always strive for excellence. Your hard-earned degrees are not just personal achievements, they are milestones that will inspire and uplift others. In, clo in closing, I extend my deepest gratitude to Kimmy Duong and her husband, Dr. Long Nguyen, and the Kimmy Duong Foundation for their generosity and commitment to supporting first-generation college students. Together, we are fostering a community where dreams are realized and futures are brightened. Thank you and congratulations once again to all of our scholarship recipients. Your journey is just beginning and the best is yet to come. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, our next guest is a man who was born and raised in South Korea and immigrated to the United States in 1977. In the wake of 1992 Los Angeles riots, he became a civic leader in the Korean American community. In 2000, he was appointed to the California Workforce Investment Board. A few years later, he was elected to the Irvine City Council before making history as that city's mayor in 2008, the first Korean American mayor of a major American city. On January 3rd, 2023, he was sworn in as the regional administrator for GSA's Pacific Rim region. As regional administrator, he leads a workforce across California, Nevada, Arizona, and Hawaii as well as Japan, South Korea, and the U.S. territories of Guam and the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands. The region houses over 100,000 federal employees and GSA associates, including 179 government-owned buildings and lease space in 976 commercial buildings. Additionally, the region supplies goods, services, telecommunications, and information technology to all federal agencies within the region at a value of more than $1 billion annually. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Shuki Kang. Good morning, everyone. Come on, we can do better. Good morning. All right, that sounds better. Well, first of all, my name is Suki Kang, and what a pleasure to be here with you all. Um, first of all, and first and foremost, I'd like to extend my heartfelt congratulations and appreciation having this foundation. So can we give a, a you know, big round of applause for Long Wen and Kim Yi Young? Thank you so much for your contribution to this community. Uh, as I was introduced, I, uh, I'm a first generation immigrant, came to the United States when I was 23 years old. So let me just begin my words by saying, who would have thought a first generation Korean American immigrant coming to the United States could become the mayor of a major US city and now I serve on behalf of the American people on the Biden-Harris administration. Only in America, it is possible that all, all of you, people like us, come here and work very hard and accomplish what we can accomplish as leaders, community uh, you know, components, everybody else. And this is what America is all about. And every single day, I thank this country for giving us all this opportunity to accomplish greater things that we can do. Don't you think? What, what do you think about another round of applause? So um, just personal um, you know, uh, experience, uh, I had an association um, 
since 1993, getting involved with the uh, what's called Korean American Scholars Foundation. That was kind of my beginning of the community work after the riot, uh, LA riot uh, happened in 1992. So this scholarship, the meaning of scholarship is you're giving your wealth, you're sharing your assets, but the scholarship is all about building our future. The, the scholarship recipients that uh, are receiving today, can you raise your hand? Quite, quite a few. First of all, you need to think about receiving scholarship, thank to the community that's so generous, they work so hard all their life and sharing their wealth with all of you because this is the fund that will establish our future in America. The America that represents the every nation in the country, in the world, we are here together to learn, uh, ex excel, and actually making a difference. So always think about your contribution to the community when you grow and become people very uh, you know, uh, significant and important in your community, like Long Win and Kim Yi Young. Always give back to your community, and that is the message, and hopefully that this scholarship will get you further down the road uh, enhancing your education, but also building our future in our society. So congratulations, and thank you so much for having me this morning. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I am very honored to introduce our next guest today, who is also born in South Korea and raised in Japan. She immigrated to the United States to build her own American dream, she is one of the first American women to ever serve in Congress. She serves the people of California's 45th district, where there is a large population of Vietnamese American. She represents the Vietnamese American's voice for justice, for Vietnamese victims of human rights abuse, and violation of religious freedom. Please welcome U.S. Representative Michelle Steele. Thank you so much for inviting me today. What kind of occasion that you have two first-generation Korean Americans actually speaking on the stage? This is just really amazing. I thought the same thing as Suki Kang. I was born in Korea and raised in Japan, so I speak Korean and Japanese as my first and second language. And I represent the most Vietnamese people outside of Vietnam. So I work Vietnamese community very, very closely. And Vietnamese community is one of the most patriotic community ever. And they love the United States. Like what we do, first generations, we love this country. And you can achieve your American dream, like me, with an accent. I never thought that I'm gonna be a member for Congress. The first day when I stood in front of the step of the Capitol, I had the teary eyes. You are one of 435 members. means that you really have to work harder for your community. And Vietnamese American community is my community. And I've been working very hard, especially human rights violations right now, that we try to bring Mr. Budap back from Thailand that he was in, he's been in prison for the last few months, just had a first uh, hearing, court hearing. And you know what? We made so much noise here. We used to have only US Embassy showed up for that hearings now. A couple of days ago, we had UK and we had Switzerland and other world that they were watching because he's the first one that UN designated refugee was actually called by a Vietnamese government terrorist. Last year, something happened in Vietnam. He was not even in Vietnam. He is a religious leader, and they tried to bring him back to Vietnam, and we're gonna stop whatever we can. But that's what we do. 
But at the same time, I'm looking at all these younger generations that you are working. I know Mr. Long Nguyen and Kim Yi Duong doing great job to promote that how we're gonna make these kids are our leaders, doing great job. Of course, Asian Americans, we're looking at their academic achievements first, so I know you guys all got all A's. And second, we're looking at the leadership. That's so important for Asian Americans. For me, I couldn't speak in front of two people. I had a very shy personality. That changed. A lot of Asian American kids I know, they know they want to say something, but they cannot have eye contact. They want to really speak out. But you know what? This foundation, Scholarship Foundation, has been watching you can really speak out. And third, that I read, that you really want to do community volunteerism, that you have to volunteer to your own community and learning your own culture and history. I know you guys are always advancing and moving up. Since I'm on five different committees, my fifth committee is AI Task Force, and I see that so broad, advancing so fast, you guys are moving that direction. But at the same time, when you volunteer for your own community, you see that your own beautiful culture, history, that you are learning with your first generation's parents and grandparents and friends together. So I am so proud of you to all your awardees today because you deserve it. And please come out. And I always tell all these younger generations, I did it. I think you can do much, much better. So thank you very much. I'm very much honored to be here. And thank you for inviting me today. Uh, thank you, Congresswoman, uh, for being the voice of the Vietnamese American community. And most importantly, showing your support for the younger generation and the support for our community. Uh, we get along very well with the Korean American community. We love Korean food. <laughs> That's uh, sci sidebar. Okay, uh, our next guest speaker, who is another Vietnamese American immigrant, who has achieved the American dream. He arrived in America with only $20 in his pocket. And that's $10 less than Miss Kimi Duong. <laughs> with hard work and diligence, he started with delivering newspaper in the local neighborhood. Years later, he became the CEO of Teletron Global, the fastest growing consumer electronics store in the Asian American community. The company started out in California's Los Angeles and Orange County but now they are rapidly expanding nationally with locations in Dallas, Houston, Washington, D.C., and many more across the country. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcoming Mr. We Win. This morning, Thank you for coming early to join with us, and uh, thank you. Um, first, I say, um, dear, honor, guest, student, and family member, I'm very honored to be here today. And look back when I first come in, and like um, Sean Lee to talk about the living newspaper. I share with you a little bit about that story. I came by myself, and when I came here, about 21 years old. No family, no nothing. The morning, you go to work, then I think if we don't work, and I just, you know, pay for all the bills. But if you work, you don't go to school, you have no chance to grow. And I study, I, I go study in the afternoon, in the evening. And after come back about 10 o'clock, get some dinner at late dinner, and 12.30, 1 o'clock. We go to the living newspaper until 5 o'clock in the morning. We go home and sleep about two, three hours, then go back to work. That's where my first three or five years when I came to the United States. And now we can thank you for the country to give us a chance. This is the American dream. I'm very honored to be here with all of us and 
especially our students. You can do much better than me, and now you have a lot of support from your family and from community, especially United States of America. This is one of the best, this is the best country in us to give us everything, to give us all the chance to be successful. And thank you, the Kim Jong Foundation. To uh, maybe two years ago, we had the event in uh, DC. And then thank you, uh, Dr. Khan, and talk to me and um, win me to, to the. Kim Mi Yun and Dr. Long Nguyen say we, how can we bring the scholarship to the Southern California? How can we do it? Can we do it together? Uh, because after I look at the do five years in DC area, then I think this, this is the best time for us to join together. And now this is a year two for this. And thank you everyone to give us the chance to do it. Thank you so much. And I had a few words to the Vietnamese uh, family member and student and committee. Thank you, this committee, to support. Um, cảm ơn tất cả các uh, quý vị đã có mặt trong ngày hôm nay cũng như cộng đồng Việt Nam chúng ta đây. Um, cảm ơn tất cả các phụ huynh, các uh, gia đình và đặc biệt các em đã cố gắng hết mình để chúng ta có được một cái học vấn tốt để có một cái đời sống tốt đẹp hơn. Và cái cái Mi Dương Foundation có một cái chăm ngon là Ngoài những tôi học giỏi thì chúng ta phải proud to be Vietnamese and mình phải phát huy bảo tồn văn hóa của Việt Nam chúng ta và quan trọng có tính leader để giúp tất cả các em trẻ hơn để đạt được những điều tốt nhất và my advice to you don't be scared try the best you can the good thing will happen to you and your family and our community Cảm ơn tất cả các vị rất là nhiều Cảm ơn uh, chúng ta ngày hôm nay và hy vọng cộng đồng Việt Nam chúng ta not only we came here to receive, but we know how to give back. That's our message. And I hope everyone have a good time. And thank you, everyone. for this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wee Nguyen. Uh, what an inspiring story. So you younger generation, if his generation can do it, you can do it too. OK? All right. Um, next, I just want to introduce to you uh, the state and local officials in the room today. Uh, please welcome State Assembly, Mr. Trita and Mayor of Westminster City, Mr. Charlie Nguyen. Um, Mr. Charlie just left already uh, for another event, so uh, Please welcome Mr. Nam Kwan Nguyen, the City Council of Westminster. The, Mr. Lan Nguyen, too, from Garden Grove City. I'm sorry, I didn't see you, sir. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I love it. What a true honor for me to be here, and this is my uh, second time at this event. I'm so honored, I'm so honored to be here. And uh, first, I'd like to extend my, my congratulations to all the award recipients for your achievement, for your hard work, and for your leadership. I myself also a first generation immigrants, like other honored guests here, they spoke earlier. I came here when I was 19 years old. I went to community college. And after that, I transferred to Cal State LA. And after that, I got involved in the, in the community. When I came here, I did not plan to run for office. I just want to. I just want to get a degree in school, start a family. However, involving with the community also gave me an opportunity to run for office in '06. I got elected on Westminster City Council in '06, and in 2012, I ran for 
mayor, and I became the first Vietnamese American elected mayor in the nation. Yeah. <laughs> Two years ago, an another opportunity came up, and I ran for California State Assembly, and with the support from family and friends and the community, I got elected. And during the last two years, I had an opportunity to work with many different organizations, community, to come up with a good policy for California State. I also advise chairperson of California High Education Committee. So with that role, I have an opportunity and have an honor to work with Cal State System, UC System, Community College, and private school across the state. So I want to thank, I want to thank Dr. Long Wen and his wife for doing this. And they've been doing this for many years. I'm so honored to know them on almost a decade. They came here as the first generation immigrants. They work hard, they achieve a lot of good things in life. They are a role model for our community. However, they want to give back to America. They want to give back to our community. And they want to encourage the future generation to continue to carry the passion to serve the community. I also want to thank all the families who are here to support students. Together, we make a difference for the community. We make a difference for the state, we make a difference for the nation. So, thank you so much for being here, and congratulations to our students, your future of the nation. Thank you. I also would like to recognize and honor Dr. Long Wen and his wife, and uh, Mr. Yi Wen for uh, organize this event and want to thank all the sponsors. So may I ask Dr. Long Wen and his wife and Mr. Wei Wen to come up to the state. I would like to invite Congress woman Michelle Steele to come up and former mayor should she can come up to join me to recognize the hard work from Kim Min Jung Foundation and Mr. Wing Wing. On behalf of California State Assembly, I'd like to honor Dr. Long Wen and his wife for their dedication to serve the community, to serve the country, and to encourage our future generation in education. <clears throat> and on behalf of California State Assembly, I'd like to honor and recognize Mr. Wing Wen for his uh, dedication, for his sponsorship for this event. Uh, good morning. My name is Nam Kwang Wen, City Council of Westminster. Uh, on behalf of uh, Mr. Mayor, which is uh, his um, I think he got another important event to, uh, to go, so he 
he ditched us. So I'm here to, um, <laughs> on behalf of uh, the whole city council, to uh, recognize um, the the kindness uh, that uh, Dr. Long Nguyen and uh, Kimmy Young has put together uh, for uh, everything that we have here. Uh, I think uh, it's been like uh, five years ago, right, Cole? Uh, seven years ago and uh, continue, uh, uh, continue to, to, to today, uh, spread from the East Coast to the West Coast. Um, just want to, uh, um, you know, uh, to send a message to the younger generation that uh, uh, we, the first generations here, uh, been through every single difficulties that, uh, you know, we, uh, since the day that we came here. But uh, we, we know that uh, the kindness that uh, this great nation that gave us uh, years ago, that uh, we become successful uh, nowadays. And we want to thank you, um, Chu Long, and Ko Kim Young that uh, passed the kindness towards to the next generation. And I want you guys, you know, um, it's not about us. It's about the country. It's about the next generation. We pass the torch to you. And, you know, later on, you're going to torch the, the, the torch to the next and the next generation, you know, uh, and go on forever like that. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, this is uh, for Kukumi. Yeah, and uh, I want to recognize uh, uh, Mr. Wing Wing here for his generation of uh, um, sponsor for this event. And uh, he's promised that he's going to sponsor for this event forever, right? <laughs> he's for you. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> I want to set an honor to be on the same stage with all so uh, just incredible people. I want to say in, in very short, I, along with my colleagues, uh, Assemblyman Chi Ta and uh, 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 Councilman Nguyen, and, and also something like uh, Mayor Charlie, if we were to remain in Vietnam, we would be nobody. I could not go to high school myself because my father was in the political concentration camp. Simple as that. But since we escaped by boat, by airplane, the assembly in Chita, and some other means, we were allowed to do whatever we potentially come to do. That's where we are. That is America's dream. But I think it's so special on this occasion today because for the scholarship, I'm grateful for Dr. Long Nguyen and Ko Kim Yi Young because so many parents from my district came to me and saying, you know what, this is congratulations. I knew this all along. That's very nice to do that. But personally, it means a lot. My personal experience with receiving such a scholarship is this. When I went to law school, I didn't have the top academic performance thing when I applied for scholarship. So I decided to go, okay, I told them what I will do if I become a lawyer. So they decided to give me a scholarship for what I promised to be because of that final dollar. It doesn't mean much for the scholars of law school. It doesn't mean much for the people who go on with a big law firm, a clerk for the Supreme Court. But it means a lot to me to know that someone recognized what I can do for my community. And because of that, 30 years ago, I still remember that scholarship of $500. And for that, that's how powerful it is. Thank you very much for the foundation to give us a chance to recognize our children, our parents, for the hard work they do and the promise they can be to serve their community. There is no value to that. And for that, I congratulate all the scholarship recipients. I want to thank all the parents to help your children to be where they can be today, like we all try to be, and especially Thank you for foundation. Thank you, Dr. Long Nguyen. Thank you, Kimi Dung. And also, Nguyen, 
This is a, another character in the community who does go all out to help the community and to help him all along. So for that, thank you for giving me the chance to share my feeling today. And thank you very much. It's such an honor to be on the same stage with ever incredible people like today. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Please be seated. Uh, please stand for one final picture. 